Okay, in this video, we are gonna talk about writing uh, points and spheres using spherical coordinates, and we're gonna do it kind of by example. So there's a couple things that you need to know. So right away, you need to know that x is rho cosine theta and then sine phi. Y is equal to rho sine theta sine phi. And then z is equal to rho and then cosine phi. So those are like the basic equations. You definitely need to know those. Um, we would like to know how to find rho, theta, and phi, so let's look at that. So um, x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to rho squared, so that'll let us figure out what rho is. Um, there's another identity that comes up kind of frequently, and it's that x squared plus y squared is actually equal to rho squared sine squared of phi. I don't really want to derive that right now, but you can definitely work it out if you draw some pictures. Um, for theta, it's uh, exactly like in polar coordinates. So theta is the inverse tangent of y over x, but then you gotta be really careful about what quadrant that's supposed to come from, which you'll see in the example that we do. And then phi, you can be less careful about. It's the inverse cosine of uh, z over rho. And then, uh, so theta typically goes from zero to two pi, and phi typically goes from zero to pi because theta is the angle with the x-axis and phi is the angle with the positive z-axis. Um, so we only need that to vary from zero to pi to get kind of the entirety of three dimensions. All right, so let's uh, take a look at an example. We want to convert the rectangular point negative two, two, two into spherical coordinates. So I chose that so that the angles, well, one of the angles works out kind of nicely and kind of illustrates a point but this would work for any point in three dimensions. So first I'm gonna calculate rho. So rho is square root of, um, and it's long, so I'm gonna leave off the top until the end. So it's x squared plus y squared plus z squared, just the um, distance formula really. And so that is the square root of 12. I'm not gonna simplify that because it doesn't really look any better if you do let's figure out what theta is. So theta is actually the hardest thing in this particular point. So I know that the tan of theta is going to be um, y over x, which is two over negative two. So tan of theta is negative one. But now I need to think about where this point is. So the point is negative two comma two comma two. So in the xy plane, negative two two is actually in the second quadrant. So I want the angle in the second quadrant that has a tangent of negative one, and so that angle is three pi over four. All right, so all that stuff with the unit circle that you have memorized is gonna be helpful when you're dealing with spherical coordinates and with cylindrical and with polar and just generally all the time. And now I need to figure out what phi is. So phi is, phi is less kind of ambiguous, if you will, because the range of arc cosine is uh, zero to pi. So it kind of just works out for you. So phi is gonna be the inverse cosine of z, which is two, over um, rho, which is radical 12. And this, uh, so radical 12 is two root three, so the twos cancel, and then one over root three is root three over three, so I'm just gonna simplify it a little bit. There's really no reason to do that because I don't know the inverse cosine of root three over three either, but um, it just looks a little better. So our spherical coordinates are written as rho theta phi, so it's an ordered triple. So our coordinate is going to be root 12, three pi over four, and then inverse cosine of root three over three. So things that look nice in rectangular tend to look kind of weird or gross in spherical, and this is a good example of that, where a perfectly nice rectangular point became uh, whatever that thing is. All right, let's move on and find the equation of a sphere. So this question is gonna be a little different. We're gonna convert x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals nine. So that's a sphere centered at the origin with a radius of three to spherical coordinates. And then we're gonna write parametric equations for the surface because a lot of um, software where you, or whatever, your calculator, when you try to graph, it won't necessarily have a spherical mode. So to do that, we can, they almost all have parametric surface graphing um, or parametric equation mode. So we're gonna do that and take advantage of it. So first, let's answer the first part of the question, convert to spherical. So I already know that 
x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to rho squared. So I'm almost done with this. So rho squared is nine, and if rho squared is nine, then rho is either positive or negative three, but it doesn't actually matter, so I'm gonna choose the positive. Um, and that's it. Those are the, that's the spherical equation of our sphere. It kind of makes sense if you think about it that a sphere would have a really nice equation in spherical coordinates because the whole system is kind of based on spheres. Um, so we're done with that. Now we want parametric equations. So parametric equations you just go back to those um, formulas that you memorized for x, for y, and for z. So x, if you remember, was rho cosine theta sine phi. So in this case, I know rho is three, so x is just gonna be three and then cosine theta sine phi. So what happens with these parametric equations is that you just have two different parameters, which is okay because we're trying to deal with more dimensions, right? Uh, so we need more parameters to make it happen. And then uh, y, if you remember, was rho sine theta sine phi. So it's gonna be three and then sine theta and sine of phi. And then z is kind of the, the odd one out z is actually just rho cosine of phi. So z is gonna be three and then cosine of phi. And now we need to think about what um, theta and phi can vary over. Well, we want the entirety of the sphere. So we want theta to go from zero to two pi, which starts at the x-axis and rotates all the way around in the xy plane. And then we want phi to be able to go from zero to pi which starts on the positive z-axis and rotates all the way down to the negative z-axis. And if we let both of those parameters vary like that, we'll end up with the entire sphere. So that's how we can do it. Um, we took a point, we took a sphere, we wrote spherical coordinates for both, and then we parameterized the sphere because that'll let us graph it on a lot of programs. All right, I hope you found this helpful and good luck.